we're gonna try and go see twice. So we actually bought resale tickets since we weren't lucky enough to get a resale code for any of the shows. The outfits, we decided to do these denim outfits from like a Studio Choom performance of I Can't Stop Me that they did. We wanted to make this as simple as possible and to save money. So we decided we're gonna thrift the pieces and the fabric and create the outfits from old denim. So hopefully it's uh, a, you know, a little more sustainable than us buying a bunch of stuff from Fabric Wholesale Direct. Okay, next I'm gonna get a head start on Kira's uh, top for her outfit, and let's go. Come with me as I drape the first time, or drape for the first time. Drape. Come drape. with drape. Drape a pattern. Come with. <laughs> Come with me as I drape a pattern for the first time. Serena taped out this shape for me, and then I've never done the draping part, so I'm just gonna see how well I can figure it out. You're only allowed to speak if I do something wrong. Okay. It's to be entertaining. <laughs> exactly what we're filming. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Hmm? Hey? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, it doesn't matter which piece I start with, does it? I think I clip it to relieve tension. <laughs> no speaking, unless I screw up. <laughs> Luckily for me, I just watched a tutorial on how to do this in our newest video, making Satine from Moulin Rouge, where Serena teaches you how to do this. So go watch it if you don't know how to do this. One side done. I have pinned something on here. Now, per the tutorial, I'm going to draw around it with my marker. And we'll see if we have a pattern piece. Okay, something new. I'm ready to have my work checked. Let's see how I did. Looks great. It's good? Mm -hmm. What about here in the middle where it's not? In the middle's in the fold, right? Yeah. It's good. Yeah, you're just gonna make that line straight. Okay. I, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the going in there. Wet my butt? Yep. The boob area is so hard. Last piece. Oh wait, no, I have to do the, the top. Just kidding. Here I'm cleaning up and straightening out the lines and adding my seam allowance. We are beginning the process of cutting out my top. We're going to try to get my whole pattern out of this one pair of jeans. Cutting it off at the butt because we have no need of the pockets. So what are we working on? We are sewing together your shirt bodice, what, I don't know what call it bodice, I don't know. Yeah, bodice. Jean, yeah, for twice. People, what you're doing? So I'm just unpicking the waistband off the jeans now so we can put it on here. I think color match is gonna be okay. I'm a little worried it's gonna be really dark compared to it, but then I think there's gonna be the fringe hanging down too, so you might not notice. Okay, good. If worst case, you could always re dye it okay. a little bit, make it richer. Fitting time! Yay! It's like basically almost done, it just needs the sparkles, right? Yes, the sparkles and the zipper in the back. Welcome to my kitchen. We are getting ready to dye the Goodwill shorts I bought. They're already blue, but they need to be a little bit more true indigo, true blue before they'll match the top. So we got a little bit of royal blue all-purpose dye left, and we're gonna use just the lightest bit to get these the right color blue, and then I'll be able to cut off the bottom and rhinestone them. So let's go to the sink. When using fabric dye, you wanna make sure to follow the instructions on the back of the bottle as closely as possible. This one called for a dash of dish soap and salt added to the water, which I did off camera. I'm going in with just the smallest amount of dye, and then I'm using muslin scraps to test my dye bath. Once I was happy with the color I achieved on the muslin, I took a scrap of the denim from the bottom where I cut it off. And once I was happy with the color that that got to, it was time to dye the shorts. 
When dyeing, always make sure to fully wet the piece before submerging it in the dye bath. That way you get a more even coverage overall. I have skipped this step before and it becomes super patchy. It's not a good time. Now time for the sparkles. I elected to hand sew on these string of rhinestones because we just done Mamamoo before this and I was so sick of E6000 glue fumes and having to deal with all that mess. I thought hand sewing would be easier. And while it was neater, it certainly took a heck of a lot longer, but the rhinestones did feel very secure. We are about to dye these shorts for the third time. We got these shorts, they were really light. I dyed them once, they weren't dark enough. So I dyed them a second time and this is how they turned out. You know, we can always dye more, but once you over dye, you can't go back. And then we're in trouble. So, third time's a charm, right? Well, things are still not working out. After the third round of blue dye, this is what we have. So this is what we've got. It's too royal blue. We need a little more like gray tones in it. So I'm gonna try to put it in a really light, either gray or black dye bath. And hopefully that'll give us the right tones we're looking for. I have good news. We finally got the shorts to a good color. Let me tell you all about this. So we did three rounds of royal blue grit dye, all purpose dye. We got them to that real bright blue color you saw. That was a mistake. I should have gone out and gotten denim dye. I don't know why I thought that's what I was using, but it wasn't. So then I put them in a bath of pearl gray all purpose writ dye, which I just happened to have in my stash. And that didn't really look like it did anything. Like it just made them darker. It didn't make them the right color. So finally I put them in a bleach bath and we got to this color. So if I put this on one side, we take the bodice over here. They're not a perfect match, but oh my gosh, is it so much closer than it was. So I'm happy with that. Now the challenge becomes, we have to turn them into cutoff shorts. So I've got a pair of cutoff shorts here that I like. We're gonna lay them out next to each other and draw and cut and fray and distress and all that good stuff. Once I cut off my shorts, it was time to give them that distressed look I wanted them to have without washing them because I was worried about the dye running out. I used a combination of sandpapering the edges cutting them with scissors, and using tweezers to pluck out individual threads. For gluing on the gemstones, I used E6000, and then I just followed the reference photos. The string of rhinestones on her pants were kind of in a squiggly line. I did one leg better than the other after having some practice. And then she just had regular old flat back rhinestones on her pockets. I ended up adding some to the back pockets as well to match the front, even though the original didn't have it, because I felt like it looked a little bland and boring without it. And because I love punishing myself, I decided to sew a second row of rhinestones on because I felt like one just wasn't enough. For the second string, I made sure to stagger it so there were no gaps without sparkle. And here I am the night before, adding a last minute clear strap to the bodice. The top wasn't super tight and the weight of the rhinestones definitely weighed it down, so I was a little scared of having a wardrobe malfunction. Uh, foreshadowing. If twice had straps, I figured I should add some straps. Embarrassed all these people walking by see me having a wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> Looking at. <laughs> I mean, I did just sew it on last night. So oh man! Out. <laughs> what did you get the zoom right now? <laughs> <laughs>